Hi guys, welcome back to BioBulletin. Today we're going to be discussing the potential use of stem cell therapy in the treatment of Alzheimer's in an in-depth and hopefully very interesting discussion on regenerative therapy. Uh, we're also going to discuss how it may be used to cure Alzheimer's as well as the ethical di dilemma surrounding the controversial use of stem cells. So I'm going to be giving you a brief overview about Alzheimer's. So the Alzheimer's disease is the most common type of dementia across the UK. And dementia is a type of syndrome, which is a group of related symptoms associated with an ongoing decline of brain functioning. Uh, it can affect memory, thinking skills and other mental abilities. So far, the exact cause for dementia has not been found, but we know that these three factors do increase the risk of disease, which is increasing age, a family history of the condition, or untreated depression. Alzheimer's is a progressive condition, which means that the symptoms develop gradually over many years and eventually become very severe. As the condition develops, the, the symptoms include confusion, disorientation, difficulty in planning or making decisions, and problems with speech or language. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about stem cells. Our body is made up of many different types of cells. Uh, most of these cells are specialized. Um, this means they are made to perform particular functions. So you've got the red blood cells that carry oxygen around our bodies in the blood, but they aren't able to divide. The stem cells provide new cells for the body as it grows um, and replaces specialized cells that are damaged or lost. I didn't know there were so many different types though. So you've got embryonic stem cells, adult stem cells, and induced pluripotent stem cells. That word pluripotent means it can change into any cell in the body. So the embryonic stem cells naturally supply new cells for an embryo while it grows and develops. Adult stem cells supply new cells as an organism grows and replaces any damaged cells. But they can only change into some cells, so they're called multipotent cells. The iPS cells are adult cells reprogrammed into the labs. These are the main types. Um, so I think, well, I know there's currently quite a few uses of stem cells, right? So uh, when I was researching, I found that they're currently used in some organ regeneration and stuff, and actually in some organ synthesis, but that organ synthesis is mainly, mainly sorry, um, for uh, research purposes. So uh, if you've listened to or watched our previous podcast on artificially synthesized brain organoids, you'd know that they're being used in neuro research as well. But I think the key clinical use at present is in treatment of certain types of cancers, pre predominantly those which affect the blood, such as leukemia. Um, and what they do there is they use stem cells, which they differentiate to provide uh, healthy bone marrow and red blood cells. Um, and that kind of assists with the cancer. Yeah, I think basically for the uses, it's clearly for understanding what happens in these different different types of cells during disease. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is, mainly for research purposes and stuff. I'm monitoring the news recently surrounding stem cell therapy and Alzheimer's, and it seems that stem cells have the potential to be a cure, right? Um, yeah, so there are actually many different ways in which stem cells may potentially be used with Alzheimer's. So one involves the systematic introduction of mesenchymal stem cells, so those are multipotent. Um, I think Vivian mentioned the definition of those, but they're, they, have the, the, they have the capacity to self-renew by dividing uh, into mul multiple specialized cells, but they're far more limited than pluripotent or totipotent embryonic stem cells. Um, and they're found in the bone marrow. So they're put into the body via IV drip. And um, when introduced in large quantities, these stem cells can find information within the body and repair it. And the increased amount of pla uh, plaques and tangles within the brain of an Alzheimer's patient um, has the, it's, it's kind of what gives it the ability to be found by stem cells. So the two essential proteins, amyloid beta and tau, um, they kind of like form the plaques and tangles. And stem cell treatment for Alzheimer's disease aims to replace the damaged cells with the healthy cells, which can grow and hence uh, creating new healthy brain cells and neurons. Um, but attempts have also been made using neural stem cells. So that's a type of stem cell found in the brain, but far more limited and rare. 
um, and they can form neurons of their own. So transplanting these into an Alzheimer's brain um, has kind of not been very straightforward for the researchers. So it won't necessarily fix the neurons dying, but it could offer temporary help before the neurons are lost. But even that is promising in that it could um, give them a short delay of actually getting Alzheimer's disease uh, and drastically improve the quality of life for even if it's a short period of time. So a treatment that gives uh, a five-year delay might reduce the number of Alzheimer's disease cases and the economic um, burden of Alzheimer's disease by nearly a third, which is probably the main potential of that specific type of treatment. Um, Would you say that's the only setback? Um, I'd say there's other setbacks in terms of introducing it to the system. It has been somewhat hard and the testing they've done hasn't always worked and it's not necessarily as efficient as they would have liked. But the main setback, because those are all kind of circumventable problems, but I mm. think this is one of the biggest problems, which is more long term, because they found that it can form new neurons, but it won't replace them in the same way, um, which is kind of what's really stopping that form of treatment from using, using neural stem cells. Um, the uh, further research is being done for stem cell treatment to be truly successful, but the challenges they're facing, like Vivian just asked actually, is the stem cells need to be able to travel into multiple areas of the brain, right? So the different places where damage has occurred. They also need to produce many different types of neurons and replace damaged or lost cells at the right number. So you can't have too many or too few cells. And too many is kind of the problem they've had while research because stem cells don't know when to stop necessarily. Um, and they also need to be able to do this in a way that enables neurons to integrate effectively into the brain and make new connections to replace the lost parts of the complex network that is the neural network. Um, but they've so scientists have been actively engaged in research on stem cells and stem cell transplants in mice and studies have shown that there are lots of benefits but this is still in the early stages of research and there are still many many questions to be answered um and a lot more work needs to be done before they can even think about applying them to human patients so there is actually um one other possible approach to stem cell therapy which might be used in certain types of um, for certain types of stem cells to deliver proteins called neutrophins to the brain. So in a healthy brain, the neutrophins support the growth and survival of neurons. But in an Alzheimer's brain, nutrient production is very low. So what they've done, and I'm sure you guys would have found this in some of your research, is neural stem cells um, differentiate to produce neutrophins. And so that could offer a route to solving the problem. Um, I don't know if any of you know anything about how they tested it or anything like that. Yeah, they tested a theory using mice, I think, right, with the key symptoms and characteristics of Alzheimer's disease, like memory impairment. They injected the neural stem cells into the brains of the mice and observed some improvement in the memory. There are further studies taking place right now to understand the effect, but the approach hasn't been tested in human patients yet. Yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah, i pretty sure I've heard about that as well. And um, I saw a similar sort of kind of, test to the theory using just regeneration of damaged stem cells from um from just standard stem cells from embryonic stem cells but obviously embryonic stem cells pose their own issues um and that's why one kind of research avenue they're pursuing is using stem cells derived from alzheimer's patients to grow large numbers of brain cells in the lab and then study the disease and try and find new drugs and stuff I think the stem cells have improved characteristics of self neural proliferation, differentiation, and recombination because of the transformation of these cells and into different types of the central nervous system neurons. So I think it has a huge potential. What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If yeah. you think about it, like in, in a literal sense, stem cells are essentially a type of cell. Well, certain types of stem cells I can specialize into any other uh, type of cell. And I, there's like immense possibilities for that. You're basically saying that any problem that the human body has in terms of in a cellular level, we can sort that out with a new and improved uh, stem, like stem cells, which will differentiate into that type of cell. And let's just say, for example, we got a cancer in a certain part of the body 
and it's destroyed the important cells that function for that part of the body. We can produce more cells to ensure that this cancer, the function of the, the part of the body, or if it's the gut and the gut, will continue functioning properly. And uh, the same thing can be done for red blood cells. Um, if you have a low red blood cell count, you can specialize these stem cells into more, to getting more red blood cells. So you yeah. can um, efficiently transfer oxygen across the body. And I think that's the main part of stem cells. I think the possibilities are like endless. And for me, this is the most exciting discovery. And aside for the ethical issues of using embryonic stem cells, I think this will change the face of modern medicine as we know it. It just has loads of possibilities and loads of treatment plans everywhere. Yeah, Sheesh, I, I definitely agree. I think it really does have huge potential. But one thing I think is worth mentioning is, Vivin, you talked about um, embryonic stem cells. I know, like you said, there are lots of other types, but don't stem cells themselves not pose huge ethical issues? Because I've read some stuff about that. I mean, also, I would like to add to that quickly. Doesn't this type of using these stem cells to regenerate the brain uh, in fighting Alzheimer's also pose ethical issues? So in terms of stem cells, utilitarianism can definitely be applied to the controversial issue of embryonic stem cell research. So research of embryonic stem cells is conducted to develop cures and treatments of chronic conditions for the greater good of the human race. When we look at the overall goal and purpose of stem cell research, we can determine it as a morally right consequence. Right. And with that, like the development into Alzheimer's disease using stem cell regeneration, it seems to be in favor of utilitarianism. What about Hinduism and Christianity? So, I mean, I can speak for Hinduism in the fact that there's a huge paradox at this point. So while Ahimsa, which is one of the main principles, which means non-violence, so harming, harming embryos, I would like to say, uh, would be against, uh, against Hinduism. But we also have to agree uh, that in Hindu scripture it's written if we're trying to benefit our own life or we're in direct risk of passing away, then we are allowed to use lower forms of consciousness to aid us in our habilitation. So essentially, embryon, em, embryos as such are a lower set, state of consciousness than real humans, or is believed in Hinduism, that's the case. So although it's not right using them, we can still use them if they're going to aid us to end a life-threatening disease. So I think in this, with that paradox, I think it's left really to the individual governments to decide because Hinduism, while I wouldn't say that it would constitute a right to use embryonic stem cells just because someone would have Alzheimer's, I think that would be a, still a very big gray area. Seeing uh, it's just quality of life that we're talking about, not necessarily life life if you know what i mean well obviously it does it does shorten life as well but i guess what you're saying is not dramatically in the sense that uh, yeah it's not it's not as bad as maybe if as others other problems essentially yeah i mean from a from a christian perspective i think the key objection is with embryonic stem cells so with regards collecting the embryonic stem cells how do you do that ethically additionally i know some embryonic stem cells are collected from aborted fetuses which is worrying from a religious perspective, to say the least, because of the kind of view of abortion from the church um, as it obviously being wrong and kind of basically akin to murder and stuff like that. But uh, that's a whole different podcast. Um, and there's obviously that kind of um, idea of playing God, which Ashish kind of touched upon with um, the brain regeneration. So it's, it's not really right to... Um, if if we start enhancing the brain now, how do we know that we're not going to do it in other ways? And I think that's uh, an issue which is ethically prevalent. Um, but as mentioned, um, it's a disease which affects so many people and surely any form of treatment or development of a potential cure which can aid natural recovery and greatly improve the quality of lives of patients is um, definitely worth it because, you know, like it says in Genesis, we're all made in God's image and God's children, so anything which helps other other life and other human life is definitely very valuable. But we should look to um, look to Proverbs um, twenty four eleven, where it talks about those being taken to death and hold them back, holding them back and trying to 
save them in any way in any way we could and i think that's in support of using this to research um and i think the key point is to do with if as long as it's ethically okay with the stem cells we're using i don't think there's any objection to the research itself i think it's just to do with embryonic stem cells and whether that's that in itself is ethical and i think if we negate that dilemma then it's definitely the right thing to do because obviously we want to save as much life as possible and it's a hugely um like prominent disease so yeah yeah i think in summary i'd just like to say that the use of embryonic stem cells can obviously bring like great results and mm. there are immense potential for it and loads of treatments but i think we have to also take bear in fact bear in mind that ethical issues are there but i think taking that from a utilitarian perspective would be the right way forward because if we think about it literally we really we really are benefiting the life of many here and some religions agree that in certain cases we could benefit if we can benefit life we're allowed to do some slightly immoral unethical um things such as taking embryonic stem cells but overall, it should really be left to the individual governments and organizations to decide what to do. I mean, ultimately, in the best interests of everyone, we should really go ahead with stem cell therapy. But um, provided that there are no major religious conflicts or cultural conflicts within a, a, a country uh, is the key, uh, I think, that one should take away from it. Yeah, and providing more research is done and that we're 100% sure it's safe to be used in human life and stuff. I think that's also worth talking about. But yeah. I think that was a great summary. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the Google form. You can find the description below. Uh, like and share the video. We'll see you next time. <laughs>